morning everyone. I am preluding this video with a little talk about a miracle that has happened in Cave Creek. You know that we announced that the Old World Quilt Shop was closing at the end of March. And rarely do we get to say, hey, someone has bought the shop and it is staying open. We're so happy that this is happening because it is on my top 10 list. It has an awesome staff and uh, instructors there and I know that you're going to want to put it on your bucket list so I am here to say that the Old World Quilt Shop is going to remain open under new ownership. One of the students and customers named Monique couldn't imagine that it would be closed and so she bought it and now we get to keep shopping there. The video that you will see is one that we actually videoed prior to the announcement of the closing. But my spidey sense must have been up, as you will see at the beginning of the video. It is an, uh, a look into the mechanization of the shop by Cheryl, who is the manager and master dyer there, and also Monica, who's their um, Sue Spargo instructor and is much sought after and when we announced that the shop was going to be closing she received numerous calls to come teach around the area but lucky for all of us she's staying at Old World. I wanted to read to you a small excerpt from the email that Monique who is the new owner sent uh, to me because it really shows the heart of what the shop is going to become. As Monique stated, this shop has allowed me to make friends that I now choose to call family and spend some of my days doing the hobby that I love. The shop is home to so many creative people some that work there and others who come and graciously share their creativity with others. Each time I go into the shop, I am always finishing something new. Many times during the week, people will find Monica in the shop teaching or stitching on her own, and she is the go-to instructor that everyone loves to learn from. She is exceptionally talented creative and is always doing workshops to further her own knowledge and skills from which she loves to share with others. Now Monique, who will be the new owner of the Old World Quilt Shop, has been uh, quilting for 19 years. She has two sons, the youngest who is um, heading off to college next year. She's young, has lots of energy and support as she and her husband travel down this new venture. So please welcome Monique to the ownership world of quilt shops and thank, thank her from the bottom of our hearts that she saved one of our favorite shops. Enjoy the video. Looking. We're looking at the lens right there. Oh, okay. All right. And okay. it's filming right now with the red dot. Oh, hi. <laughs> oh. Okay. Hi everyone, I'm here in Cave Creek at the Old World Quilt Shop and we're doing something a little different today. I have gotten two of the cogs in the wheel of Old World Quilt Shop to sit down and talk with us. So here we have Monica, who is the teacher extraordinaire here, <laughs> and Cheryl, who dyes most of the wool here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And are, do you teach also? I used to teach beginning quilting on miniature piecing, precision miniature piecing. Wow. Um, but responsibilities of managing the shop and dyeing the wool have kind of overrun my teaching. So you both are helping D stay open because we want the shop to always stay open, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> because, yes, we do. Yeah, I always hate it when I have visited a favorite shop and then, you know, two or three years later I find out it closed. And I know, like to know that this one is still here. <laughs> now you know, um, if you recognize this face, 
<laughs> Monica and I went on a cruise together with Sue Spargo, and we had a wonderful time. And she is um, the person here at the shop who teaches all kinds of stitching classes, and um, you will see some of her work. But in the meantime, I wanted to just talk about the wool dyeing. How long have you been dyeing wool? We started um, January about, um, let's see, I guess it's almost been two years now. Mm -hmm. We started about two yeah. years ago um, with a wool club and um, we had um, gotten some dyes from a woman who was leaving the area. She passed on some Cushing's dyes to us. And I said to Dee, I said, give those to me and just let me take it home and give me some white wool and let me play with it. And so I got some books and educated myself on how to dye wool properly, got some of the basic um, instruments that I needed to do and we started dyeing wool and we've just gotten better and know more now than we did when we first started but mm -hmm. so we've been doing it for about two years we know nothing she's gotten better <laughs> and <laughs> you just tell her i want this color well, you know that's yeah. kind of what we do yeah. and we look we had a don't you think it really took off when summertime fun came in the shop because it's... we had none of those bright hot i was colors. dying i was dying mostly prim colors yes. for our kits. We really weren't selling it um, on the shelves. It wasn't really on the shelves. I was just dyeing um, prim colors for our um, kits in the shop. Then Monica brought in Summertime Sampler and that kind of opened up the whole world of bright wools. Mm -hmm. And still to this point though, I'm still dyeing most of the wools for all the kits in the shop. Mm -hmm. And um, those are still the prim colors. We still have a market mm -hmm. for those prim colors. And then I'm also dyeing all the wool for the brighter things that Monica's introduced us to. Plus and, all the block of the bunts. Yes, all the blocks. See, and that's too. the thing that I find fascinating and that I've not seen before is that uh, in a lot of shops that carry wool, there there isn't a master dyer who is dyeing mm -hmm. the wool for that kit. Yeah. So when people come in here and they're buying a kit, they're actually buying the wool you have dyed specifically for that kit. Um, not all the wool in a kit has been hand dyed. We like to mix it up. So um, some of the textures, we use mill dyed wools in our kits. Okay. And then um, things that we want more solid colors or just slightly textured, then I'll dye it. So it's like usually a combination of mill dyed and hand dyed in kits. Now, if someone wanted to buy wool online, like to call, mm -hmm. is there an online shop or do we they call have? You or? We have our textures online at this time. Mm -hmm. Okay, the different colors of our textured bundles that we sell are currently on our online shop, and we're in the process of putting together a a swatch booklet or ring we haven't really Ooh. decided how it's gonna yeah, come together that would be great but a swatch um, booklet and then putting the colors that we're dying online as well so that people that'd can be great kind of like Sue's yes. uh, thread uh, booklets yes. that yes. we use well and she has she has uh, customers that come in uh, one lady came in and had a Sue Spargo project that she just had the pattern book and she said I want the I want mine to look exactly like this well some of the colors that were in there I don't think you had either ever done or mm -hmm. we had even ever seen in the shop before and Cheryl took the book home and dyed the wools and came back and the gal made the quilt and it looked exactly like the one on the front of the cover. Oh, sweet. Yes, so that's the advantage of having somebody here that is so in good house. at, in-house, that is so good at matching colors, looking and going, I know how to get that 
color even if we don't have it right now she knows what to do mm -hmm. and it it's a Most pleasure to <laughs> no it's a pleasure <laughs> to have her in the shop doing this because i couldn't do what i do in terms of doing some of my sous spargo without her dyeing the wools that we can use so let's take a wa walk over to the wool section and Cheryl can show us some of her work, some of her creations. Okay. No. So this is the stack of mill dyed wool, yes. right? Yes. These okay. are the mill dyed wools that we use in our kits. Um, we sell them in a various sizes. These are the fat eights in um, this container here, the fat quarters, let's or see. over here um, against the wall. And then we also will tear down any piece of wool down to as small as a, a fat sixteenth um, to so sell our So people can come in dye. and say, I want this, this size. So yeah. we, will, we will go as low as a fat sixteenth, which is seven and a half by twelve and a half. So that's um, our mill dye. Then these um, are our texture bundles, which... Um, we dye here at the shop. We, we, we don't dye them at the shop. We dye them at our homes. Um, <laughs> we don't have a dye kitchen. Um, the owner, Dee, and myself um, do, these, uh, do the dyeing on our kitchen um, stoves and in our kitchen sinks. So um, these basically what we do is we take undyed textures and some of these textures already have some color in them. We just mostly buy them for the texture themselves. Then we stick them all in the same pot with the same color of dye, and that gives us um, a bunch of textures of different colors. So these are currently on our website um, for sale, our textures are. And what I find fascinating, which you mentioned before, was that every dyer has their recipe kind of like cooks mm -hmm. yes you know there's that sick you have the secret spice yes. that you're putting in your dye yes. that makes it look like this and, right and different techniques and i'll show you a couple of pieces of hand dyed wools where we've used some different techniques which you learn but uh, wool dyers are very secretive about both their <laughs> their recipes for color and for their techniques um phyllis of Winterberry Cabin um, has been publishing how to dye wool articles in Woolworks magazine. Uh -huh. um, I have found her articles to be um, very helpful and she gives you at least five, four to six recipes with every article, which I love because I love Phyllis's um, work. Her wool is beautiful and so it's lovely to be able to get some of her dye recipes. But other than that, Everybody else is pretty secretive. Well, I wish I wish my father-in-law was still with us, but uh, G's dad used to go out in the desert and collect plants and dye Die wool. Dye organically. Yeah. Dye organically, then spin the wool, because he yes. was a weaver. Yes. And, and so the colors of some of the weavings that we have of his, it's just, it's like you're outside. Yes. You know? It's so yes. beautiful. These are all done. Um, I'd love to be able to say that we use all natural products, but this is a, um, we use a combination of two different dyes, um, Prochem dyes and Cushing's dyes. Mm -hmm. So we use both of those, um, never together, separately, but we get different different effects with the different dyes. The Pro Kims okay. give us the brighter, the Cushings give us the more prim colors. So well, let's come this way around and take a look at this wall of wool here. And these are a sample of our hand dyes that we keep in the shop. Right now our stock is pretty low because this is a pretty busy time of year for us. And we have a lot of people coming in here and um, buying wool from us at this time of Everybody year. Everybody's come for warmer weather. Warmer weather, which we have not had. <laughs> which we have right? not had. No. <laughs> You'll notice there's some textures in here as well as solids, but these are all our hand dyed colors that we do. Um, and then um, these are mostly, not too many of them are modeled, what we call modeled or special dyes. So I have a couple of special dyes to show you that, oh, that yes. um, my partner in crime, D has um, just started doing. She's done this lovely um, mottled black gray wool. I that, bought two of these yes, already. That all, the, <laughs> that all the ladies are using as a nighttime 
um, scene for a Halloween quilt that they're doing called Sleepy Hollow by 1894 Ooh, Cottonwood House. Got on that bandwagon. Yes. And then um, she's experimenting with what some spot dyeing that um, I taught her. We do this. We don't do this in a pot. We do this in a pan. And so this is her, the product of her experimentation for today. So she brought me she, in this piece. She These really... pieces do not last more than one day in the shop. Yeah. We we bring these in. People see them. Is Monica like buying Monica, them? Like Monica. Monica's buying them. <laughs> and they buy them up before we can even get them out of the, before oh, anybody can even see this them. This one is so And amazing. this one's very, this is oh. very interesting. The texture on it is just Isn't very, very great? interesting. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> So this is what Dee had in her pots this weekend. Oh. Uh, me, I was just dyeing um, things for kits. So we're gonna go over and take a look at the kits. And so this is kind of my little workspace here where I am putting together kits. Um, and I was gonna say, it's just, it's just a matter of, you can see that some of the wools are, um, I've already cut a lot of these wools. Some are hand dyed. Some are, um, um, like I said, the mill dyes, but I cut the wools, um, dye the wools for this particular kit, and this is a normal Whaley um, Love Shared kit that I've dyed the wool for. So it's a combination, and now that everything is all cut, we'll, we'll separate it into the kits to make this lovely little pattern. And, and there's our girlfriend's little kits going together. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, what I have to say, what you have to know is that today is the day when the shop is closed. That's why we get to walk around and, and, and make ourselves at home here. And although people have been banging on the door trying yes. to get in here. Yes. They know that wool is, look at, oh, look look at Monica. <laughs> She's trying to She's hide <laughs> Get that piece. I knew when she saw those pieces that she would be gaga over them. Yeah. <laughs> so Cheryl is here on a quiet day putting little kits together. Um, with getting all, them organized. Yeah, getting them organized. Yeah. She has them all labeled and then she stuffs them so that when you come shopping or you order online or call the shop, you'll be able to just say, I just need that kit. I just need that buttermilk basin kit. <laughs> <laughs> and most of our, most of all of our wool kits are on, on our online shop. Yeah. Sweet. All righty. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I took this out after I stuffed it up my shirt <laughs> and I laid it out. And to me, this is a work of art. I think you could put this in a frame, do nothing with it. But I'm thinking in the lines of this being the forest floor and do trees and have trees have aspen trees coming through here and have the leaves up there embellish do your stitching your background stitching make your wool leaves make them a little different color but have this piece stay intact and use this as a frame piece these are works of art when these come into the shop and indeed they're correct these don't last more than a day or two but look at and you can see why you won't see wool like this anywhere else yeah and you just don't want to cut it up no <laughs> i don't i would never cut this up i would work this i would work this into a background piece and do something on the top mm-hmm and did you know, by the way, that my friend Monica, famous that she is now, also designs no. patterns. And you can get the kits at Old World Quilt Shop. And so there's this adorable pillow back here. And a lot of these things are kitted. She is obviously the table runner queen. <laughs> There's that snowman. Oh, this one is just so perfect. Oh, and that's a really good beginner one. Did you quilt this? Did you? Is your no, quilter person? No, my quilter, my quilter person quilted yeah, that. Yeah, because boy, that is amazing. Yes, uh, you're just like me. <laughs> <laughs> this one is yummy. You know, it just makes me want to go home and make a table runner for every season. 
Well, it's kind of fun to change them out. You yeah. have one and you take one down and put another one up. Oh, look at this one. This is so cute. They're really nice beginning yeah, these ways are to great. do wool. Some um, of them now, this one got spargoed a little bit. <laughs> Our, our verb. Our verb. <laughs> Thanks to Ariane. <laughs> That's right. Um, yeah, bullion knots around there. That is adorable. I love this. Like for a, this would be perfect to like on a, uh, those uh, couch tables. Yes, a, a sofa table. That's yeah. where I use mine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So know that you can uh, get these patterns and kits at Old World Quilt Shop. So today we're going to also include a little, like a bed turning, but it's going to be a chair turning. And these are Monica's quilts. And so she's going to tell you about them. So this is... This was my first quilt that I did in wool. It's all wool, the background. Um, I had seen a pattern from a gal that had about six of the center motifs done and I thought well I want to do something different so I added some extras I figured out a border and had a wonderful quilter do my long arming on it the the stitching is just absolutely stunning on this one yes can you get a close-up of the stitching G? I mean that quilting is extraordinary the corners are just amazing how she worked the corners of this quilt But it was fun and it also was my first foray into something that wasn't as dark and primitive as what I had done before that. Right. Because mm -hmm. every so often we need a change up, huh? That's right. Okay, now I love this one. Who's this one the I designer did a, of this? Oops. Um, this is, uh, I'm going to have to yell across a hand to heart, Cheryl. Heart to hand. Heart to hand. I was close. Kathy Campbell of Heart Yeah, I love her stuff. And did this. I redid the borders. I didn't want to do the borders the way. I, I, I apologize to everybody that looks at anything. I never do anything quite the way it's supposed to be. It's the big joke in the shop that, of course, you changed it. Of course um, you changed but it. But I changed the borders a little bit, added a couple of little things to, the, to each one of the blocks. Did a little bit. This was my first foray into spargoing one of my one of my the uh, new verb. It's a new verb, spargoing. <laughs> um, uh, this was my first foray into doing just a little bit of that on a uh, on a project that was not Sue's. And same quilter. quilter yes, yeah, same quilter. Oh, she is. She's a she's gem. amazing. She is yes. a gem. We're very fortunate to have her here. Okay, here we'll do this. And then next. I just have little. She had, Anna asked me to bring some things in. I give away a lot of my things, so I don't have a lot of things at home. Um, I think is is this little guy buttermilk basin? Yes, yep. that's a buttermilk basin one from a couple of years ago. I again this got spargoed a little bit. Uh, not much. There's some. I see some bullions in there, um, but uh, oh yeah, there's bullions around. The there's bullions, carrots. and I did a little palestrina knot, okay. and I did a little double, double cast on. So there's a couple of them. <laughs> now this. Now this is if one. If this goes missing, yeah, <laughs> it'll be in the camper. <laughs> okay. This was one that I did this last summer with Sue up at uh, Madeline Island and we came up we had to have our backgrounds done and then we had to fill nine vases and uh, it was a fabulous class because it really stretched you she showed you techniques to use as far as oh, making yeah. stems making flowers um, so you learned a lot of things little tuffets um, little folded flowers. Where are the little folded flowers? Right in here. I folded that little flowers out of wool. Um, but it really stretched me as a stitcher to have to come in with a blank slate. And she was so encouraging and so helpful into what to do that I felt confidence 
in being able to take a blank slate and run with it. It was a little scary at first because it she gives you such great um, instructions when you're doing one of her pieces. She gives you such great instructions for what stitches to use, what threads to use, everything. That one we were kind of on our own, which was really good for good for us. And then this is one that this it's is still on my UFO list. Yeah. <laughs> This is Crimson Tweed. It, tweed. It's going to the quilter uh, today, actually. Um, what I did on this one is, in fact, this part of it, you recognize, Anna, I'm sure. That was what I was working on on the, cruise. the Panama cruise. Yes. Um, but this was my first real jump into the pool of take a take a piece that has no embellishment and embellish it and this was I can't remember what year it was of Sue's it I was think a 10 okay around there. and and this was her first book that had zero embellishing yes yes Crimson Tweed but look at what you've done with that I and, mean and so this was fun this was oh, look at the birds but again, to try to figure out where I wanted to put what and what threads and what, mm -hmm. but it was it was fun. But I had a little more to go on because this was a pattern of hers, mm -hmm. one of her older patterns, which right. I had always loved and wanted to do. And then the shop here, the coloring is a little different than the one that she did because the shop did a block of the month on it, and that's when you and I signed up for it yes <laughs> <laughs> hey, mine will be done in 2021 okay <laughs> we're gonna hold her to that <laughs> okay now this is darn amazing this it, one is the new block one of the new blocks of the month of the shop and this one really got spargoed <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so if you want to sign up for this block of the month, you just call Old World Quilt, yes. right, and sign uh -huh. up. Because I, this is adorable. You can look at the Santa. The Santa, the beard is three hours of drizzles, and the coat and the hat uh, are about close to seven hours of um, cotton or colonial knots. With now, don't scare them. Well, this it's, was like just get minutes. some good ball games, <laughs> a couple good movies, and you're okay. <laughs> it's absolutely adorable. It was a fun one to come in and, and embellish. It really was, it really oh. was. So now we have some little small items to show you. Um, Monica teaches class here, as I've said before, and so one of the stitching classes that she teaches you get to make these various items. This one is the first one. This is a kit that comes from Sue, and this is a beginner Sue Spargo uh, teaching class. Mm -hmm. And the, the, my students come in, they learn how to do the stitches that are on this particular, um, uh, here we go. Pin cushion. Pin cushion, thank you. Pillow. <laughs> Pillow. Little pillow for little, little people. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, and so when they learn to do this, then th most of them have a whole lot of fun doing it. So then they transition to this one, which is called Chicks on Parade. This is one of my little patterns. And they learn how to do four more stitches on this pin cushion. And then they go from that to learning how to do bugs on this one. And then they go from that one to doing a needle roll. I want it. I need a needle roll. That they learn. Whoops, I'm holding that backwards. You can tell I don't do this. <laughs> um, I'm not Vanna White. <laughs> anyway, uh, then they go to the needle roll and they learn a couple more stitches on that one. Uh, and also just the wonderful thing to be able to store their needles now that they're doing more work and they are using different needles and they you know the problem with you lay them down you get them lost they go into a different right. place and, and you to can't be able, figure out what they are that's exactly right so to keep them organized this is a real wonderful tool for people to have that start getting into stitching mm -hmm. and, and then these are just this is a Sue Spargo kit if you look at it 
my bullion's there. This was my first thing I had ever done. My bullion's there don't look as good as my fourth one <laughs> on the back. <laughs> they did get better. And this look was one that this. I put together. Um, it's not a kit. It wasn't anything. I just... Did you put these zippers in? No, I did not. <laughs> Who put you the zippers know, in gonna for think, you? I'm going to think of a story to tell f on you. <laughs> <laughs> Monica has zipper fear just like I do. I do. I have a zipper phobia. <laughs> yeah. I have a wonderful friend named Connie who puts my zippers in for me. Thank goodness. <laughs> I want her to be my friend. <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, thank you very much for hanging out with us today. I hope you enjoy this. Oh, I always do. <laughs> and we shall see you again. Okay, thank you.